Quick disclaimer, I know it's been a really long time since I last posted. Um, I'm not going to explain it right now in this video. Um, lots of really exciting stuff to tell you about soon, nothing bad at all. Um, but I hope you're well. I've missed you guys. Broadly speaking, sample libraries tend to fall into one of two camps. On one side, you've got your realistic instrumental or vocal libraries recorded on beautiful instruments in beautiful rooms by beautiful microphones. These help us to do what we call mock-ups, which is to replicate thunderous sections of players later to be recorded and replaced by those real players in those beautiful rooms recorded by those beautiful microphones. On the other side, you have post-production led practices where it might have sounded like a traditional piano originally, but the resultant pad rains down on you in a way you'd never thought before. It's fresh, it's creative, and it's immediately inspiring. Why is it that the sounds in this second camp are often far more inspiring? Is it that some of the work's already been done to create those sound worlds in advance? And by enjoying them and being inspired by them, are we sort of hailing at the mercy of those soundsmiths? I don't think so. I think it's the unpredictability. And what could be more unpredictable than nature? I mean, really, really love weather like this. But in it, there's a chaos so difficult to untangle. To have a sound made from nature itself is really quite unnatural. So what if we were to take these sounds of wind, rain, thunder, birdsong, and turn them into an organic sample library of its own? Welcome to Thrumming Textures Earth. Truth be told, um, this ambition to turn nature into music has been sort of in the pipeline for about five months or so. At sort of the tail end of spring, um, still stuck in lockdown, I started thinking about all the different sampling possibilities. I couldn't record players, but I could record nature. I started by breaking down what it is that makes great libraries sound great. It's not necessarily having 101 round robins and thousands of articulations. Sometimes I'm joyed by the fact that one of my favorite libraries might only have one audio file, an idea that was recorded well, produced with intention, but above all, is authentic. A problem I run into a lot with found sounds is that they just take up the entire frequency spectrum. So if I were to create a knockoff thrumming textures urban sounds, um, and I had this street noise here, you can see it just takes up the entire frequency spectrum. If I start to filter too harshly, don't get me wrong, it sounds great, but does it sound like a street to you? A sample library made from birdsong needs to sound like birds, much like a sample library made from a cloudburst needs to sound like water falling. Our experience of these sounds is mostly the same, so first it needs to appeal to that aesthetic, and then needs to deliver on musical features. Thrumming Textures Earth is formed of four basic sound worlds. Let's begin with my favourite, which is birdsong. Somehow this journey begins here at 5.45 in the morning because it's International Dawn Chorus Day and I don't think there'd be a better day to record birdsong than today. Now, according to the website, you have to be up about an hour, up to an hour after sunrise starts. So I'm going to have to get out there now because the sun's been up for about 15 minutes. So this is the recording that I made in May. So there's a lot of really exciting sounds in there that we can use already. Something that I found is that if you want to make something that sounds both musical and authentic, you need to add two different layers, really. First of all, you need to add a drone that has a very kind of musical, basic sound to it, sort of like a sine wave. And then on top of that, you need to add the sounds of the environment that you're in to make it sound a little bit more like birds. So you're sort of masking the fact that you've created quite a basic sound underneath. Um, but I just found that this made it slightly more musical. So I'm going to start there. First of all, we've got the sound of this B. Which I extended 
and then EQ'd a little bit. So this is the sound of the loop. So pretty basic, and then I've cut out the frequencies that I didn't want to reveal this little drone in the middle. So then I bounced that out, uh, stretched it a little bit, put it up an octave, and then I added the crystallizer plugin. Which, as you can see, is very, very quiet, but it just helps to add that octave on top of it, and it also sort of detunes it slightly, which I like. Um, I'm using my orchestral default here, which is the FabFilter Pro R, three-second reverb, relatively bright and pretty far sounding. I then added another EQ just to help bring down uh, that noise floor on the top. You can see here I'm also using a couple of reverbs, uh, got Quantum Leap Spaces and another instance of Pro R as well, just to give it that sense of space. I was recording using two AKG C214 microphones, so it is a stereo signal, um, but just to help give it a little bit more of a kind of ethereal sound. Now I tried this in the sampler, but then I realised that it didn't sound anything like birds, obviously. So then I decided to cut up some more sounds and actually tune them to the note that I wanted to use. So if we combine them together, you get this underlying pitch, which stays constant and is well-tuned, and then you've got these little sounds on the side. So really, I'm just using a little bit of EQ just to pull out the frequencies that I want. Uh, I've, obviously, I've tuned them up to the right frequencies um, to make sure they're in tune, and then I've used just a really healthy amount of reverb just to kind of tie everything together. Now that sounded nice, but I remember from the recording that there was a lot more kind of small chirpy birds. So that's when I took an additional recording and did this. So this is the sort of what Christian would call a shash over the top. Now you can see here that I've taken off those low frequencies, I've taken off the high ones as well, but then I've only subtly, it's only about 4 dB, I've just boosted the frequency. When you combine it with everything else, it just helps to tie it all together. And of course, I've just pulled that up, but if you listen to it as it was, it just helps kind of sow that seed underneath. So in this initial contact instrument that I made just for the bird song, you can see I've got two different sounds. We've got the bumble drone. So that's your basic sound. And then we've also got the birds as well. Sounds a little bit eerie on its own but when you combine them both. Now what really helps tie this together is some effects that I've got down at the bottom. So as you can see here, the key position varies the gain of the notes. So those low notes, to sound really strong, sound more like the sine wave, the bumble drone, and then the very top notes, are almost completely just the sound of the of the birds themselves. So in the middle, there's a bit of a crossover, which I think makes it sound quite musical. Just as an example, if I were to deactivate this one and the one on the Bumble Drone as well, have a listen to this. We've lost a lot of that bottom end, um, so that just helps to kind of bring that out a little bit. I find when you've got really strong low end, it's not really in question what the harmony is. Let's move on to wind. 
So this recording was made using the microphone on top of my camera. Um, this is just the Rode Video Micro, 40 pounds or something, um, and it's a mono microphone, so it doesn't have quite the same sense of width that the Birdsong had. But this has by far the most kind of white noise sound to it. It's the trees just out by the back of my house, um, and there are quite a few of them, so you just hear the sounds of the leaves blowing, the grass, things like that. Now, something that kind of tickles me a little bit is that you can hear the birds that were in the bird song in pretty much every library because, of course, the birds are always there, um, which I quite like. So this is really quite kind of boring. Um, on its own, there's no discernible frequency that's going to be interesting, so you've just got to make them, which is fine for wind because I don't think wind necessarily sounds like anything in particular. It just needs to have this kind of soft... Um, lulling sound, I suppose. Christian Henson has made a video, which I'll link down below, about how everything sounds better when you tune them down rather than tuning up. Um, and I tend to agree with that. So I've kind of boosted uh, higher up rather than lower down. Um, that way, a sample is being slowed down and there's a little bit more kind of chaos that's being unwrapped there. Whereas if you tend to tune a low note, it's only going to be sped up when you play above that note. So let me show you what I've done with this. I've taken a short clip and I've just really boosted um, this frequency here. I tend to find that if I cut off all of the kind of low end, um, that you lose the sense of it being wind and that these big trees are sort of resonating. So you can see I've used a bit of a shelf here. This is 13 decibels down, and then I've also cut to about 100 hertz. Again, I'm not completely cutting off because I want it to sound like wind. But I found that if I really pulled off on the top, um, you didn't actually lose too much and you do clean up quite a lot of noise. So I'm using a really, really steep line here uh, just before that frequency. Then I added some Echo Boy, because you can't go wrong. And you can hear that that only really starts to take effect a couple of bars in. So I've actually cut off the beginning of what I bounced in place so that you can always hear the echo there. I've also got some tremolo. And then finally, just another EQ, again, just to clean up that low end. I find that the Echo Boy, with the saturation settings that I've got, it does tend to introduce a little bit of noise down below. So that's always good. Added a bit of reverb as well um, in the same way. And then we ended up with this. which sounds really nice. So this was the kind of primitive instrument that I set up. Um, just one sample, it was a C-sharp 6. Really, really nice. And then I've added some echo and some reverb to help give it a little bit more space. You can hear some of the saturation that builds up there, which I quite like. Um, sounds a little bit kind of like a storm's coming in. Speaking of, let's check out Thunder. Now, I did record some samples of Thunder, but I found that it just wasn't kind of bitey enough. It was a little bit too distant. So I found this Thunder Strike online. Which had a bit more bite to it, and I tried lots of kind of decapitation and things like that, and I combined it with lots of other sounds until eventually I had this, but I wasn't too happy with it. I think the main thing was it didn't sound thundery enough, you know? It was really kind of mid-range sounding, um, no real definition in the top range, no real definition in the low range, and so I decided to change tack slightly. Um, and so I started with this. So 
So it's a bit of a loop. Um, I grabbed some frequencies. Don't worry, I'm not going to make this a sine wave. Uh, added a bit of compression. And then I also added some decapitator as well. But I had this set to um, touch. So what I've done is I've also automated the mix to go up as well. So it really builds. You could think of this as like thunder rolling in or something. Um, again, did a little bit more filtering. I like the frequencies here, but anything above that just became too loud when I was playing anything above that sample. So just trying to consider what everything's going to sound like once I've bounced it out. Got a, some Echo Boy, because you can't go wrong. And this sound too was recorded in mono using the microphone on the camera. So that also just helps to kind of broaden the stereo image a little bit. Added some tremolo as well. And that became a good starting point. Um, but as you'll see, if you look here in my contact instrument, there are two different sounds. So the second sound is this rolling thunder, which I found online. So very, very simply, I've just filtered the frequency that I wanted, but given it a little bit more space. So, you know, I don't have to fill this up too much because I've got that other frequency underneath. And so when you listen to both combined, um, you get the sort of the immediacy of that drone, but then also the kind of unpredictable flutter of, um, of those other sounds. sounded quite nice. Um, again, it's very, very simple to put these sounds together. But the one thing the thunder was missing was a bit of rain. So I recorded this sound using the microphone on the camera again. Um, and this was from under an umbrella. So you really, I mean, it's quite heavy rain, as you can hear, but I needed to soften it slightly. So I added this EQ, taking down, you can see I haven't cut off, I've just shelved off. Um, so you still hear it a little bit. Um, and then I'm boosting that frequency, lowly, I think it's a B5. Which sounds a little bit crunchy. Um, I've also added the pan man, which is sort of like a tremolo. And again, because this was recorded in mono, just needed to give it a little bit more of a stereo image. And then I've also added some reverb. This is just my, it's not my favorite reverb at the moment, I have to say, but um, it's the Berlin Church 2.2 seconds by Quantum Leap Spaces. It sounds fine. Now, to be honest, that would have been absolutely fine, but I decided to go a little bit further and add this sample. Which I believe is also from the same video, but what I did is just a little bit more kind of creative upper edge stuff. So that's a B6, and then I added the Saturn, which if you haven't tried already, is really fantastic. This is a saturation tool, so I'm using it on the warm tape setting, and I'm really also using it as an EQ because I'm bringing up that band and then pulling everything else down, but I really like the way it sounds. It's got this great dynamics tool, which allows you to kind of get a little bit more separation with the transients. So that worked to my advantage, actually. Then I'm using Echo Boy because you can't go wrong. And then I added the CQ, which is a really fantastic plugin if you want to bring out the um, kind of upper harmonics.
and then more Pan Man. Uh, you can see I've also got a second instance of reverb here. This is uh, a studio wide, so it's quite a short reverb. So that's quite percussive, um, but when you combine it with this, you don't even necessarily notice, um, but it just gives it just a little bit more definition at the top. Um, so if I show you in the same way as we did with the uh, bird song, you can see I've got two different groups. So these are actually incorrectly named. Um, this is the rain drone. And then this rain sound on top is just really, really gentle. So when you combine the two together, you sort of get the best of both worlds. Um, another thing that's quite nice is I've also done the same thing with the key position. So um, the rain sounds are louder up at the top and the drone is louder down at the bottom. Okay, so let's just see how it all sounds together. Um, we've got our basic interface here, Dynamics Expression. So Dynamics is the mod wheel, Expression is CC11, but you can map this to whatever you like. Um, and then I've also got these blend knobs here, which allow you to cycle through the various sounds that I've shown you today. So this is with everything on at 100%. And like I said, it's really easy for you to dial in the various elements as well. If you've got spare faders on your MIDI keyboard, I'd consider mapping that so that you've got a little bit more control there. So just a couple of other little things to show you. Um, each instrument, or each patch rather, is bussed through a separate instrument bus. So we've got wind, thunder, uh, rain, and birdsong. And you can see that each one has its own effects on it. So I've added in um, an echo and a convolution reverb that I think sounds the best that it can do um, for the style that I particularly like. Um, so without needing to add any sends or reverbs, things like that, you've got that already built in. But of course, feel free to do what you want with those. Um, I just wanted to direct you to where they are in case you're not that familiar with um, how this busing works. That's about it, really. Um, it's been a real joy to put together over the last few days, and it's been sitting on my hard drive waiting for me to use um, for the last five or six months now. So really pleased that I could finally do that. As you can hear, only a couple of samples per instrument, so really, really simple. And, um, you know, if you've got an idea and you want to produce it well, don't be too kind of intimidated by having to create loads and loads of different sounds. Thank you so much for watching. Again, apologies for the slight hiatus, but thank you for sticking with me. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you again very, very soon.